tap water on yeah. the trap line hunting. It was kind of it was kind of neat because uh, uh, he was a real jack of all trades. He, he was a uh, he was from the old old school, and uh, everything uh, he did was uh, you know it was all done by hand. All his tools were old. Yeah. He had uh, he grew up with a broad axe in his hand. You know. He grew up with a buck saw. Cross cuts uh, ads, horses, all the horses. They were farmers, they were jack of all trades, they were they did everything to survive. They were trappers, hunters, he was uh he was uh, a marksman when it comes to hunting. Yeah. When it comes to shooting he was a marksman. He was like they uh they wouldn't waste bullets. Miss missing a shot, that, that was not even I remember, you know, he'd give us a box of uh, a box of bullets, twelve gauge bullets, and send us out to get ducks. And uh, we'd get back, and he'd count the bullets and count the ducks. You know, you couldn't waste the bullet. <laughs> so yeah. when we missed, it it was like really upsetting. <laughs> uh, they wouldn't waste bullets. Miss missing a shot, that, that was not even thought of. Not a thought of. There was no excuse. And, and back in the day, the bullets were like. Precious, like you know, like everything else back then. Nowadays, it's a little different. I don't know about today. Today's world we live in, it's uh, changing real quick. It's changing while we speak. We're living through a pandemic. If you got to live off the land today, there's only very few of us that's gonna do that. There's not a there's not a pile of us that's gonna go out and. Uh, you know, survive off the land. Yeah, we'll set maybe another box or two and uh, and uh, we'll set a couple wolf snares on that trail. First time we're trapping it, it's a real beauty. Lots of marten sign. We're seeing lots of sign of everything. Otter, fox, moose. Yeah, we're seeing lots of wildlife here in this area. We've got lots of old growth. Uh, it's like a real old growth forest. It's all like, uh, we've got lots of white pine here. Old birch, old spruce, that should be a good thing. So, let's get our ass going. <laughs> uh, I'm no different than anybody else in, in that business. You know, we were brought up on uh, on uh, First Nation territory, and uh, like we, what we learned is we learned that from our from our father, from our mother. My mother was also a trapper. So, you know. You, you learn from uh, watching, you learn from being there, <clears throat> walking behind him. Yep. Then at night he'd tell you stories, you sit at that table after supper. So he'd, he'd also tell you stories and, uh, on all the things that he didn't, that you didn't see, that you didn't do. Mm -hmm. He'd tell you, you know, all about uh, different ways how to hunt, different yep. ways how to trap, yeah, that's... stuff like that. And, you know, mm -hmm. Growing up, after a while, you know, we changed things. We we called them the Ten Commandments. We always said, uh, you know, you got to obey these commandments when you're in the bush. And uh, we applied the Ten Commandments for all the stuff that has to do in the bush with respect, you know, and all that. We even had an 11th one that we threw in there. And that was, thou shall not get caught. <laughs> That was our 11th commandment. <laughs> but yeah, about well, years growing up, like especially with my father, and, and we're, we're talking about back in the 50s and the first part of the 60s, and uh, the government was really raising hell with all First Nations people, uh, you know, giving them a hard time over fishing and hunting and uh, uh, try to, uh, you know, take away their hunting rights, take away their treaty rights, and. Uh, trying to dismantle who they are, who they were, uh, try to take away their spirit the, they had in them. And not only uh, not only government, we had the Catholic Church doing the same thing to us. You know, try to try to try to crush us, try to take our spirit away, and stuff like that. But uh, lucky enough, lots of us we uh, we survived it. 
But yeah, the government, uh, what, what they were doing back then, they were taking all the kids and putting them in uh, uh, residential schools, reform schools. Lots of the adults, they were, they were putting them in jail. You know, lots of the, for uh, almost no reason at all. They would put them in jail for the, for the smallest crime. They they're, they're, they're trying to take the people off the land, you know. And it was all about the, the more they got off the land, the, the, the easier it was for them. So us as, uh, as uh, growing up with all that, and lots of our, our elders all went through that. And living, they were all living through that. Mm -hmm. So lots of them never talked about it because it was just like a, was a crime to talk about it, yeah. you know. So we've been chucking your water down here every day. Okay. Our motor went on our pump. Oh. Wawa water. I said, now we're drinking Wawa. We're drinking water from Wawa Lake. Here's hard to beat. Yeah, we well, we don't know the difference. My people, they had to go away in the bush to have ceremonies. They couldn't have ceremonies in, in the community, even though we lived in a First Nation on on uh, on, on a reserve. They they back then they called them. Indian Reserve, even though we lived in that, uh, um, on, on that reserve, there were 90% of the people living on the reserve were all Catholic, and they were all followers of the Catholic Church. So if you would do a First Nation ceremony in your backyard and people seen it, well, you'd have the community against you. So what they did, <laughs> we went in the bush where nobody could see us doing ceremony. And, and that's what they did. Hmm. So we, uh, yeah, and it, it took away a lot of, uh, it took away a lot of teaching. It, it, it took away a, a way of life, you know, for, for, for the people, for the Jubilee people, the Métis, you know, mm -hmm. you name it, Cree. Yeah, we had to live in the bush. And uh, not only me, there was lots of First Nation people that uh, fathers and mothers took their kids and went in the bush and lived there for 10 years at a time, never come out. Just lived right in the bush because they couldn't come out because the government already took half their kids and lots of the First Nation all had big families. So they already lost a lot of the kids. Lots of the kids never still today would never come back, you know. Yeah, us, we, uh, us, we're living off the dollar. You know, we, we try to make a dollar because of all the, all the tools we use. We're using boats and motors and snow machines and trucks, you know, to, to get on the land. Those are tools. Yeah, all, all those tools we, we use all cost a lot of money today. So we got to figure out a way, uh, you know, how to make our money so we can, uh, so we can use those tools. The way we eat, the way we live, that's never changed for me. It's always been the, it's always been like that. It's always been in the bush, killing rabbits, partridge, moose, catching fish. Ministry of Natural Resources was always chasing me around because of a shooting moose out of season or something, you know, in that order. But uh, yeah, we just kept doing it. We never, uh, and the ministry even today, they're given, uh, Myself and and uh, a lot of my friends a uh, hard time.
like uh, so many other people, like you know, they can't see the forest because of the trees. For us, it's just the opposite. Where when we're in the bush, we're like you know, we're, that's where that's where we want to be. Yep. That's where we're comfortable. So we're at peace. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah, a lot of times when uh, we're out there, we will. What I see right off the bat, right off the, when I when I glance and look around, you know, you see what it looks like, and that's a neat thing. Especially if you're doing as much exploring as we do, because we we do explore a lot of country. <clears throat> we, we move around the whole territory. We're talking from one year to the next. We're going all over. Yeah, we go. Do, Different places to hunt boats, different places to uh, fish. And you're eating beaver too? Yeah, the, the beaver meat's got the highest protein of uh, just about any animal. More than beef, you know. But we ate beaver and we ate deer because it was, we had to. Yeah. There was nothing else to eat. Huh? You know, banning the pancakes for our, for our bread mm -hmm. and uh, for our lunch in the bush, it would be beaver or deer meat. For supper, it would be beaver or deer meat. Or fish. You know, and potatoes. So your beavers, you pretty much shoot them or? Trap them. <coughs> yeah, we were trapping beaver. We were trapping everything. We were trapping uh, marten, otter, mink, beaver, fox, everything. Well, spartans on that, they're tough. But I remember the day not long ago that uh, every other day I'd eat one, tough or not. You know, it went good with. Uh, Just their different diet, then I guess they're eating the buds and. Yeah, more. And uh, some of the kids, like not all the kids, some of the kids are fortunate. Uh, their elders will take them on the land, you know, year mm -hmm. after year, and they get the chance to see everything that I do. You, when they're in the bush and when they're on the land with you, what they learn is, they, they learn to be passionate. They learn all about love. They, they, uh, the biggest thing they learn is ownership on the land. Where lots of the kids today don't, got no sense of ownership. Mm -hmm. For us guys, ah, we own it all. This is all ours. Mm -hmm. So in order to keep what we got, we gotta take care of it. Right. So we're teaching that to the kids. Eh? You know, we're only going to kill one moose here, one moose over there. They're yeah, not going to take them all in one right. spot. We're going to catch a couple of fish here. <clears throat> we're going to go over there and catch a couple. Yeah, our mother earth <clears throat> gave us all that. So we, give, we show them respect. So that when the kids who are with you, and everybody's with you, when you're giving the tobacco back, you're showing respect. So all those little teachings add up after. Mm -hmm. So when they get older, they're gonna know about love. They're gonna know about being passionate. And it, it sets the stage. They know all about respect. You know, they got respect for trees and water. They love respect for other people. Yeah, they, it's gotta, they gotta learn it somewhere. And there's not a better place to learn it is on the land. We were always to take care, you know, we always took care of the land. We were the, like the police, you know, to keep it going, to keep it there. The government set up uh, rules, you know, for hunting and fishing. <clears throat> they, they set those rules in, 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 their, in their favor. They're not looking at, uh, you know, like manage it in a, in a way that will you know, be sustainable. They're, all they do is try and try different things. As long as they're making money off it, they'll just keep, you know, they'll keep doing it. That's like, uh, you know, we, we talk about genocide, <clears throat> you know, and in, in our culture, what happened to the government, they, they had a genocide against the native people, and uh, what happened up there in uh, Big Missinabi Lake, and that's what went on there. That was a genocide that took place on Big Miss. And uh, today it's a uh, Chapel Game Reserve. <laughs> You're talking about a lake that had four uh, First Nation communities on it, probably for thousands of years. Hmm. 
You got the Crees, the Oju Cree, and the Ojibwe's all living in the same spot. But when the government paid a park out of that, they moved them all. They had to move them because they had to. They were users of the land, you know. So they got rid of them. They got they moved them all in the Chapel area. And a lot, and it didn't happen right away. I'd say uh, probably 30, 40 percent of them died on the land. Wow. Well. Just because they didn't want to move. Yeah. They hmm. stayed there. They just stayed there, trapped there, fished there, and the government kept uh, giving them a hard time. Cut off their access, cut off. Just the same thing like what they're doing today when they put sanctions on other countries. Mm -hmm. That's what they did to the First Nations. They put sanctions on them. When I was a kid, uh, the, the First Nation people would ask the government for gill nets to go fishing. The government gave them a big long stick. So we called it a government pole. That was our fishing rod. We didn't want a goddamn long stick. We wanted a gill net so we can catch enough fish to, to survive. They could have supplied us with gill nets, you know, to make sure that we all had food. Mm -hmm. But they didn't. All they did was give us a government pole. And today, uh, you, you, you won't never hear the young kids talking about a government pole. <laughs> But when I was a kid, that was that terminology was used all the time because we were still fishing with sticks because we didn't have no fishing rods. <laughs> so we used the government ball. But we knew which stick to use the best one. <laughs> we don't. Uh, some of the guys are all using fishing rods and that, but myself, I prefer a stick. We'll get a bunch of sticks and we'll set a bunch of lines and use these sticks. Yeah. Works. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the elders from Moose Factory, they would come and spend the summers with us. And uh, my brother would go spend the, the, the winters with them. For seven years, my brother went up there in the winter. Yeah. And uh, spend the winters with he He learned how to speak their language. One year, he could speak Cree fluently. Yeah, no problem. He still today he can speak Cree. He can speak a Jewish fluently, so no problem. Yeah. Yeah. So come summertime when he come home, they'd come with him. So and we'd live in a bush. All we did was live in tents. So we'd set up a big tent, you know, and we we, we were on vacation for the whole summer. So every day we'd go out and uh, you know. We want a beaver, we go get a beaver, we want a deer, we got a deer, we go get fish, we sit around and cook whatever we needed for that day. Oh yeah. And uh, we would tell stories. All about the, they would tell us all the stories about that. And like I said, and we were showing them our, our culture, our, our traditions and our, our way of life. And they were they were showing us theirs. It was hardly any difference at all. Because uh, we both had the same uh, we were both living off the land. Yep. It was the same way of life. It was the same thing. They made their bannock same way we made our bannock. Mm -hmm. you know, they set their traps. They did the same thing we did. We, whatever you had to do, whichever way you had to uh, catch a beaver, you caught it. You know, in the middle of winter, the way they were trapping, that's the way we were trapping. Mm 